So my name is Park Bostrom. I'm the author of LX Root. Again, the title of this presentation is LX Root, Run, Develop, and uh, Test Packages and Package Managers in a Lightweight Virtual Environment. Let's get started. So here's an outline of what we're going to go over. First, we're going to talk a bit about LX Root. Then I'm going to do three demos. Uh, first, installing a guest user land. Then uh, in demoing some non-distro package managers, then a demo of building a package. Then we're going to discuss distro package managers, LX Roots command line interface, use cases, and unexplored territory. Then we'll have a conclusion. Let's talk about LX Root. LX Root is a lightweight alternative to CH Root, Docker, and other virtualization tools. The name LX Root is a combination of LX from Linux and CH Root. My goal when I wrote LX Root was to be able to manage software packages without root access. More specifically, I mean install and run packages without root access, install and run old and new versions of the same package at the same time without root access, build packages from source without root access, all done via a CH root like user experience. As an added bonus, once I'd written LX Root, I discovered that I could run actual distro package managers inside of LX Root. I was not expecting to be able to do this. So some similarish tools, there's OpenVZ, LXC, Docker. Uh, every similar tool I had tried was too bulky for me. Then I learned about unprivileged Linux namespaces in 2018, so I started writing LX Root. I had a working prototype fairly quickly, and I published the first uh, source code in 2020. So here's a table of tools that are similar to LX Root. I'm not going to go over them all. The table is organized with um, smaller tools closer to the top and bigger tools further down. You can see that LX Root is one of the smaller tools in terms of lines of source code. It does not require root access. It was initially released in 2020, and it depends only on standard libraries. Uh, you can compile LX Root into a 169 kilobyte static binary, but I'm hoping to make it even smaller than that in the future. Let's talk about Linux namespaces. What is a mount namespace? So LX root creates virtual software environments via namespaces. For example, the mount namespace allows each process on a Linux computer to have its own mount table. In other words, different processes can have different views of the file system, different root directories, different mounted file systems, different bind mounted directories, different read-only settings on any mount point. Uh, the runtime performance cost of using namespaces is zero or almost zero. These features are built into the Linux kernel, so they're very efficient. Let's talk about lightweight virtualization. Let's say we have five Linux computers. Each computer consists of a kernel and a user land. And the reason we might have five of them is we want the different user lands set up different ways. We want to get packages from the different Linux distributions. Um, so we've got these five computers or these five virtual computers set up. Now, there's one aspect of each of these computers that is identical, and that is the interface between the kernel and the user land. The Linux kernel has a very consistent interface. Uh, so obviously, the question becomes, could we run all of these user lands on one Linux kernel? And of course, there are several virtualization technologies that will let us do this. Uh, LX root just happens to be another one. So we're getting closer to our first demo here. What we're going to do in our first demo is we're going to start with a Linux computer with just the normal host user land on it. And we're going to look at how we go about adding a guest Alpine Linux user land to that computer. So here's our first demo, install an Alpine Linux guest user land. And again, this is the same diagram we had two slides back. I just squished it up to the top to make more space on the slide. And we are going to add a guest Alpine Linux user land to this Linux computer. So how do we do this? Well, we CD to our home directory, we clone the LX root source code, we build it and run its unit tests, and then we install it. It's a single file. You don't have to install it in user local bin. You can do whatever you want with it. But I'm just putting it in user local bin for this demo. The next step is we need to get user land files from somewhere, and we need to make a directory to put them in. So we're going to make a directory in our home directory called user land, and we're going to download a mini root FS tarball. Alpine Linux provides a mini root FS tarball. Uh, and we're just going to use that. That has all the files we need. So we extract that tarball into the user land directory that we just created. Then we copy in etsy resolve.conf. And the reason we copy that file in is because we want programs that are running inside the user land to be able to talk to DNS servers. Then you just run LX root and you tell it where the directory is. So we're now going to move on to our second demo. We're going to demo some non distro package managers. 
And we are going to run these non-distro distro package managers inside the guest Alpine user land that we just created in the first demo. As we will see, most of these non-distro package managers will just work inside of LX root. So let's start with pip. We're going to install pip and then use pip to install Python's M2 crypto package. So first thing we do is we make a home directory for our user inside the user land. We then enter the user land, as I said two slides back, but I actually left out a few details. We need to do a couple more things. We need to use the dash dash network option and the dash dash root option. Uh, by default, you don't get network access inside of LX root. And if you want to share the host's network adapter, you use the dash dash network option. The dash dash root option will give us write access to the entire guest user land. By default, we wouldn't have that. Um, and it also simulates being the root user, which means the kernel will tell the process that its user ID is zero, even though it doesn't have any extra privileges. So the kernel is sort of lying to you about what your user ID is. Now, the indented prompt here, that indicates that the commands that are indented are being run inside the virtual environment. And the pound sign is because we asked for simulated root user. So the shell thinks its user ID is zero, so it's giving us a, a, a pound sign for a prompt. We run apk update and apk add pi, uh, pi3 pip. We're using Alpine's package manager apk to just do an update and then to install the pi3 pip package. And then we also have to install the dependencies for M2 crypto. I just had to figure out what these were on my own. Pip doesn't really, I don't think pip automatically installs these. It can't, it's not a system package manager. So uh, we need the build base, Python 3 dev, swig, and open SSL dev packages. We're then going to exit this LX root virtual environment and we're going to enter another one. And this one does not have the dash dash root option. So we're now running as the same user that we are on the host. Our, UI, our UID will be the same as on the host. And we will only be able to write to our home and temp directories. So then we just run pip install m2 crypto. That command will succeed. We can then run Python 3, import m2 crypto, and see what version we have. And we have version 0 0.38.0. So that's pip. We're going to say that pip just works inside of LX root. And next, we're going to look at NPM. I'm going to speed things up a bit here and just show you the whole slide all at once. Uh, so we first, we create a first LX root, a virtual environment with as root, and we add the NPM package, just like before, exit that, use a second LX root virtual environment, and we NPM install TypeScript, and then we can run TypeScript and see what version of TypeScript NPM installed. So I'm going to say that NPM just works inside of LX root, and we're going to try SPAC. Now, Alpine does not have a SPAC package, so we're going to install SPAC manually. Um, in the dash dash root virtual environment, we add the packages that SPAC depends upon, uh, build base, bash, git, and Python. Now, I also had to add the Py3 Klingo package. SPAC wants to provide its own, its own Klingo package, uh, but the version of Klingo provided by SPAC did not work. Uh, so I in, used Alpine to install Alpine's version of Py3 Klingo. And then we exit that virtual environment, enter a second virtual environment without root access, and we just follow the standard SPAC instructions. We git clone SPAC, uh, we configure SPAC, and then we can run the time SPAC spec zlib, and SPAC will start uh, churning away, compiling lots and lots of things. Uh, it will print out warnings because it's not using the version of Klingo that it expected. Um, I think you actually could get the version of Klingo that SPAC installs to work. I think it's a, a incompatibility with the Alpine user land, not an issue with LX root. So I think SPAC could work better than it is in this demo. So SPAC mostly works some friction with Klingo, which may be due to Alpine, not LX root. I also tried SPAC with a void Linux user land and ran into different problems, but I don't think those problems are due to LX root either. Again, I think they're user land incompatibility problems. So let's move on and try Nix. So we're going to try to install Nix and use Nix ENV to install a Lua package. Uh, Alpine will soon have its own Nix package, but the demo environment I'm using here does not, so we're going to install Nix manually. So the first thing we do again is we make a home directory for our user, but we also need to make one more directory because Nix likes to install its packages in slash Nix. So we create a second user land slash Nix directory. Then we enter our dash dash root LX root virtual environment, and we add what Nix needs. Nix needs bash curl and xz. We exit that environment. Then we enter our non-root virtual environment with network access. And we also use this option wd slash Nix. That will give our non-root user inside this virtual environment right access to the Nix directory. 
And we also need to tell Alex Ruth that we need to be running a bash shell to follow Nix's installation instructions. And then we just follow the instructions on the Nix website to install Nix, uh, configure Nix. We can then run Nix env i Lua to install Lua. We can see where Lua was installed, and we can run Lua and see that it works. And that's the version of Lua that uh, Nix installed for us. So we will say that Nix just works with the, um, the WD slash Nix option. Let's look at Flatpak. Um, we're going to use Flatpak and try to install GNU cache. Uh, in our dash dash root virtual environment, we use APK to add Flatpak. We exit that virtual environment. Then without dash dash root, we just use the standard Flatpak commands to, in, to uh, configure Flatpak and to install GNU cache. You do need to use the dash dash user option here because you're not doing a system-wide installation. You're doing a user installation. And then I exit that second virtual environment. And to actually run GNU cache, I'm going to use a third LXroot virtual environment, this one without network access, but with access to the Xorg server because GNU cache is a graphical user interface program. And GNU cache will run like that. You could also give GNU cache network access. You could use network access and Xorg access at the same time. I just chose to do it this way. So we're going to say that flat pack also just works. So this is the summary of our, uh, our non-distro package managers inside of LXroot. Let's talk about LXroot's limitations. Inside an LXroot environment, the SUID and SGID file mode bits are ignored. Consequently, privilege escalation is impossible, as is changing a process's UID or GID. There's a quasi exception to this later restriction. You can simulate changing the UID and GID to zero. Another limitation is that most calls to CHO will fail. So we're now going to move on to a third demo. We're going to build a package. We're going to try to use Alpine's A build utility to build a Lua 5.4 package. So we LX root into a dash dash root virtual environment. And we use APK to add the Alpine SDK package, which will give us all the tools we need to build Alpine SDK packages. Now, as, as installed like this, a build will expect to do privilege escalation to uh, in the process of building packages, and privilege escalation will not work inside of LXroot. So we need to remove the privilege escalation layer from a build, which was very easy to do. I just needed to redirect three sim links. And by redirecting these three sim links, uh, a build no longer tries to do privilege escalation. I then exit that dash dash root virtual environment. The next step is to generate a package signing key and fetch uh, Alpine's A ports tree, which has all the instructions for building all of Alpine's packages. So this time we're using a dash dash write option instead of dash dash root. Dash dash write will give our non root user write access to the entire user land, but it will not simulate being the root user. And again, we need to do this because we're, we've removed the privilege escalation, um, but A build itself will not run if it thinks it's root. It says uh, you run as a non root user. So then we run a build key gen. We generate a, our key. We install the key. You don't have to install the key. You can build packages without it, but installing the key will allow you to then install those packages. And then I use wget to download a zip of the aports tree because that was faster than using git. And then I uh, unzipped the aports tree. Finally, we're going, or not finally, but step three or four, we're going to download the Lua source code and build the package. So again, with dash dash in a dash dash write user land. Uh, we're going to CD into the Lua 5.4 directory. We're going to run a build checksum, which will download the Lua source code and checksum it. And then we run a build R, which will build the Lua packages. And then we can see there are the packages that got built for us. And now, finally, we're going to try installing those packages and running them. So we CD into the directory where the packages are. We run apk add in the package. We, and then we can see where it got installed. It got installed the user bin Lua 5.4, and we can run it and see which version of Lua we have. So I'm going to say that Alpine's APK and A build just work with minor modifications inside of LXroot. So now we're going to discuss some distro package managers. And we're going to start by discussing Alpine, Void, and Arch all together. Where can you get a user land for each of these? Well, Alpine and Void both publish tarballs that you can just download and extract to get a user land. In the case of Arch Linux, they don't publish a tarball. So I downloaded their installation ISO, and I extracted the live environment from the installation ISO, and I used that as my user land if I wanted to do things with Arch. The package managers are APK, XBPS, and Pacman, and all of them just work for installing packages inside of LXroot. As we saw with Alpine, building worked with minor tweaks. I haven't tried building Void or Arch packages inside of LXroot. There are demos available on GitHub for Alpine and Arch. I haven't made a demo for Void, but it seems to work pretty well inside of LXroot. 
Moving on, Ubuntu. Ubuntu does not provide a user land tarball. So again, I extracted one from the Ubuntu installation ISO. The package managers that Ubuntu uses are apt and DPKG. And to get them to work inside of LXroot, I needed to stick a shim in between them because apt would only run as non-ute and DPKG would only run as root. So I needed to stick a shim in there to do that privilege escalation or simulated privilege escalation. At present, I'm using P root to do that. I was making my own shim, but I think P root will work better. So this is new and experimental. Uh, using the Ubuntu and that shim, I have also installed Steam on top of an Ubuntu user land inside of LX root. I use the shim with apt and dpkg to install Steam. Steam runs. Steam seems to install games. The games seem to run. Um, building is not really applicable with Steam. And interestingly, I discovered that some games, some Windows games, will run on an Ubuntu user land, but not a Void user land. And I was able to reproduce this on actual hardware with Void. I did a bare metal install of Void and had exactly the same problem. There might be some way to fix that with Void. I don't know. I realized I forgot to talk about building packages on Ubuntu. I haven't tried to do it inside of LXroot, but typically to build packages with apt and dpkg, you don't need root access, so I expect it to work. I also tried Fedora. I don't believe Fedora provides the user land. So again, I extracted one from the installation ISO. I think the package manager was DNF, and I don't really know how to configure it. So I gave up uh, and haven't really explored using Fedora with LXroot. And then also with any distro, you can transplant a user land. So if you install the distro on bare metal or on a heavyweight virtual machine, you could then copy out the entire user land with tar or rsync. And then you could probably uh, LXroot into it and see what you could do. You might or might not be able to install additional packages or build packages, but you can probably LXroot into it and see what works. Let's talk about LXroot's command line interface. Uh, OK, so as you've seen many times, the basic usage uh, is LXroot and then just the user land directory. You can also tell LXroot to run a particular command inside of the virtual environment with dash dash and then space and then the command. You can request write access to the entire user land. You can request write access plus simulated root inside the user land. Now, there are some other ways to control write access to the user land. You can put a mode before the user land. And one of the modes is RO. If you put an RO before the user land, then you'll get a read only user land. Nothing will be writable inside it. You can also do RW to get a read write user land. This is very, very similar to the dash dash write option. And then there's RA, which stands for read auto, which is the default. And with read auto, uh, if you're not simulating root user, only your home and temp directories will be writable. With dash dash root, all directories will be writable. So those three above this, they're all variants of the form LX root mode till the user land. And you'll see this mode popping up in later slides. So that's why I introduced it here. Additional command line options. You can chdar to a particular directory inside the virtual environment before running a command or launching a, a shell. You can chdir and make that particular directory writable, as we saw in our Nix demo. You can set environment variables. You can pass in all environment variables. You can allow network access, allow xorg access, allow pulse audio access. There are some more long options, the dash dash options that I'm not talking about in this presentation, but they're covered in the documentation for LXroot. So let's talk about sharing directories. And this is where the modes come back into the picture. So the first way to share a directory is to bind a directory that's outside the user land into the directory or into the user land. And the syntax for this is bind, an optional mode, then the destination that you want it bound to, and then the source directory. Uh, so here we're binding two directories into our user land. We're binding this overlay home user directory to home user, and we're binding overlay temp to temp. Now, there are two other ways to share directories. They're called, I call them partial overlays and full overlays. This partial overlay is doing exactly the same thing, but it's a slightly terser syntax. It can be more convenient. Uh, I don't really have time to explain it fully. And then there's a full overlay, full overlay, which is even more terse, but again, I don't have time to explain it. You can also clone the host system. So you can LX root into the host system itself and modify aspects of the mount, uh, the mount table or make things read only or deny network access. Uh, due to time, I don't have time to discuss this further, but I wanted to let you know it is possible. I haven't done it a lot, so it should be considered experimental, although I'm, I'm sure it can be made to work if it doesn't work right away. So let's review the command line interface, the basic command line interface, you LX root, and then you tell it the user land. You can optionally specify a mode before the user land. 
And then there are additional options. And these are sort of the additional options right there. If you learn this command line interface, you can create virtual environments with LXroot and start to do interesting things with them. Let's talk about use cases. Due to time, I'm going to have to go through this fairly quickly. But these are the types of things you can do with LXroot. You can deny network access. You can file system, or you can sandbox file system access. You can install foreign packages. You can build packages. You can test packages. You could do dependency validation. You could test portable packages. You could test a non-distro package manager in different user lands from different Linux distributions. You can test and control up. Grades, you could distribute an application together with the user land that it needs to run. You could distribute a build environment, possibly including a cross compiler. Some more example use cases you can avoid software updates. You can install Steam, Proton, and Games. If you wanted to try building a user land that didn't have a libc in it, you could use LXroot for that. You might be able to use LXroot on a supercomputer, for example, to run a modern user land on an older enterprise type kernel. And then there's some example use patterns, which aren't really use cases, but things you can do. You can share directories and data across user lands. So you can bind the same directory into multiple user lands, and both user lands will have direct access to exactly the same folder because it's bind mounted in by the kernel. You can install a bundle of packages into a single user land, and then you could subclass that user land by overlaying different directories on top of it to use it for different purposes. You could streamline your data backup. You could put, if you have multiple virtual environments with LXroot, you could put all your important data in one directory and then bind mount subdirectories from there into your different virtual environments. And when you, when you want to back up your important data, it's just one folder that you can back up all together. And then there's another thing I've thought about, which is time series snapshot testing. You have a user land that gets updated every day or every hour. You take a snapshot of it with like BTRFS or ZFS, and then you have all those snapshots. You could LXroot into any snapshot and run programs in older versions of that user land. So let's look at some unexplored territory and possible future plans. I don't know how much time I have left. One minute. OK, so I don't have much time, so I'm not going to talk about these, but these are things I've thought about. And then in conclusion, LXroot is a lightweight alternative to other Linux software virtualization tools. LXroot is smaller, simpler, more general, and possibly safer and more flexible than alternatives. Some primary use cases. Uh, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions about LXroot. My email address is park.nexus at gmail.com. And you can find LXroot on GitHub. Thank you.